It's intersect groups. It's another new tool feature in Tinkercad. Let's take a look at what this is all about. So intersect group joins the other two groups, union group and bundle groups. And let's just review what these are all about. Because when you take a look at something like union groups, you are going to select some shapes. And when you select union group, all of those shapes will merge together. And if you have holes as part of those shapes, those holes will serve as cutouts. And you are going to end up with one final shape that is the culmination of both the solid shapes and holes. Now, taking those same shapes and applying bundle groups to them, you're going to notice that they will group together, but they do not merge together. In fact, all of the shapes still maintain their shape and the volume or space that they take up. Now, on the surface, it may look like they are separate objects still, but they are indeed grouped together because you can move them around and they will move as a group and they are also outlined in green. Now, I find bundle groups to be really handy when it is paired up with the use of union groups because with that combination, I can create a cutout and insert in another shape with just a few clicks. Bundle group the cutout and the shape that I want to insert and then take that bundle group and merge it using union group with the shape that I want it to cut into. All right, <laughs> that was not a very good explanation of bundle groups, but I will include a link to a video on bundle groups at the end of this video. Okay, so let's get to the newest grouping here called intersect groups. So we're gonna select our three objects here and we're gonna access this new feature by clicking on bundle groups or union groups because when that happens it opens up the menu on the right and you're going to see intersect groups listed along the bottom alongside the bundle groups and union group options. Yeah, I know it's a little weird that it's not listed along the top with the other two groups. Anyways, notice what happens now with intersect groups. It takes your selected shapes and creates a new shape from where these shapes overlap or intersect. It is definitely a different way of looking at grouping objects. Right off the top, I see the use of intersect groups as a way to save me a lot of time when it comes to creating cutouts. For example, if I take this sphere here and take a box, and I'm going to make this sphere actually slightly larger, and we're going to overlap these two shapes together and center them both on the x, y, and z axes. And then we are going to union group them, but it's to get at the third option there, which is the intersect groups, again, along that bottom right menu. And when I do that, notice what happens here. I have this box with this rounded edges and corners. And I could have done this by creating a cutout, but it would have required me to take a sphere, turn it into a hole, and then place that inside of a much larger box, and then group them together as a union group, and then take that shape convert that into a hole, and then apply that as the cutout to my box. And I would get the shape that would look very much like this. But with intersect groups, it is so much easier and so much faster. Basically, take those two shapes and intersect them. So here's another example. I'm going to place curved text on top of a curved surface, like a sphere or half a sphere, like I have here. Next, we will grab the text shape as though we were going to insert some text. And I'm just going to resize this text to ensure I have a lot of overlap here because, again, I'm going to use the intersect grouping tool. Selecting both shapes here, I'm going to align them to make sure that they are centered to each other. Again, selecting both of those shapes and clicking on union groups so I can get access to intersect group. And there it is. That is my shape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily ungroup this because I want to make a duplicate of that half sphere by pressing the duplicate button in the upper left menu or just control D. And when I do do that, you're going to notice now that I have two different shapes here. Again, I can move this sphere out of the way and you can still see there my curved text that I created using intersect group. And next, all I need to do is just select that text and just raise it up so it pops out out of that surface of my half sphere. 
I could have done this without using intersect group, but it would have taken many more steps involving creating cutouts and then grouping objects and back and forth. But with intersect group, it's fast. And we're just scratching the surface here because don't forget, you have other ways to generate shapes using extrude sketch, revolve sketch, and even scribble. Any unique shapes that you create in these tools can also be used and grouped through intersect group with other shapes. So I've gone into scribble, I've created my first shape. What I'm going to do next is just resize it a little bit here using those grab points, and then I'm going to create a second shape using scribble again. And for this shape, I'm really going to keep it simple. I'm just going to create a single curved line. Because in trying to wrap my head around intersect group, I need to be more aware of how these two shapes are going to intersect or merge with each other, because that's essentially what's going to create my shape. So taking my two scribbled shapes here, I'm going to ensure that there's plenty of overlap or merging between these two shapes. I'm going to select them both to start by union grouping them. But what I really want is that third option there, intersect group. And now when I select that, I've created this really unique shape here that seems to almost have this sort of curved shape that slopes down on one side. And again, this was created by using intersect grouping because it's focusing on those two shapes and where they overlap with each other. So this is just scratching the surface here. I'm playing around with it. I'm still trying to wrap my head around how else I can use this tool to create these unique shapes. And that's where the fun begins. Before we end things, just a few things you should know. When using the intersect group, what counts as overlap between selected shapes depends on how many selected shapes you have. So using the intersect group with two selected shapes, it's going to form a shape based on where those two shapes overlap makes sense. So having three selected shapes, intersect group would create a shape where all three objects would overlap. So in a situation where I have three objects selected, but there is no occurrence where all three overlap, I'm not going to be able to create a shape using intersect groups. And I end up with an empty shape. The other thing I wanted to mention is how Tinkercad is making these changes and adding features that are starting to really mimic those in Fusion. The use of sketch uh, to create shapes either as solids or as an open path shape, the creation of shapes through the rotation of a sketch, and now the ability to group shapes as a bundle group or a union group, and now as an intersect group. These are features that I've been seeing in Fusion. Again, I'm just starting to get into Fusion, but I'm looking for any type of crossover between Tinkercad and Fusion, and I'm starting to see this now in this latest batch of features that they've been releasing lately, and it's kind of nice to see. And sure, yeah, the buttons and the menus that you see in Tinkercad will definitely be different than the ones you're going to see in Fusion, but, but for me, it's been about trying to rethink how I'm going to make shapes using sketch tools, or how I'm going to create different combinations of shapes using either bundle groups or union groups and now intersect groups. I have a feeling this is how I'm going to have to approach my design work in something like Fusion. All right, that's it from me. A great tool, a great feature, and new add-on from Tinkercad and the folks at Autodesk, so thanks again. And until next time, take care, and we will see you on the next video.